I want to quickly wrap up this math material by giving you a preview of the answer to Brian's question, uh, which had to do with how is it ever going to be possible for these sine functions to match the horizontal line at 1? How is it ever going to be possible for it to match it on the entire closed interval from 0 to 1? If you take a look at what these functions are, are doing, the more terms that we add into this uh, series, they're still approximating 1 better and better. But they still are forced to be periodic functions with a period of pi. Uh, sorry, a period of 2 pi. Right? Um, because they're built out of sine of nx, all of those are functions that have periods which are integer multiples of pi. Um, 2 pi, sorry. And so the Fourier series outside of the interval from 0 to 1 is going to still have this oscillating behavior that's typical of a regular sine function. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff happening here. One of them is that if I add more and more of these sine functions into my, uh, into my picture, then in the limit, what actually ends up happening, the Fourier sine series itself, looks like this. It's going to add up to 1 on the open interval from 0 to L. But on the closed interval, the picture is a little bit different. Because at 0 and at L, it doesn't actually add up to 1. Because it suddenly has to make a jump from positive 1 up here to the next half of a period, it has to be down here at negative 1 instead. So it ends up looking like this funny step function that has to go up and down and up and down for each of the different half periods of this extended, what we call a periodic extension of this function. And then the question is, what does it do at the in-betweens? Like, what would the Fourier series, what value would it take at x equals 0? So I'm going to put that out real quick. If I have a function that's made up all of sine of nx's, what am I going to get in that series when I plug in x equals 0? 0. Because every one of the building blocks is going to have the value 0 at x equals 0. So not only does this Fourier series actually step up and down like this, but at the intermediate points, it takes an intermediate value. So its graph would look like this funny step function, which is each of the steps are punctured at both ends. And then we also have these funny zero values happening in between. I'm going to try to uh, erase these red lines in between to give you the, the better, more accurate picture of what the graph. This is what the series, the Fourier series that we were just talking about, would add up to if we were to graph it. So it definitely does a good job of approximating the function 1 on the open interval from 0 to pi. But at the endpoints, it jumps down to this intermediate value. Those of you who tutor with me down in the Academic Achievement Center know that a lot of students, when they come down to math services and they have a function that looks like this, or maybe a function looks like this without the red dots in between, um, they'd be asked, what is the limit of this function as x approaches this point? And when you approach it from the right, the limit is 1. When you approach from left, the limit is negative 1. So what does a student want to do? Split the difference, right? It's a very common attempt in a single variable calculus course, um, which is not true. I mean, the limit is definitely not equal to 0. We can't just split the difference. Um, but the Fourier series somehow actually does. The Fourier series gives you the intermediate value. And so there's a theorem called the mean convergence theorem. that tells us the manner in which Fourier series converge. So the sum of a n sine of n pi x over l, x equals 0 to infinity. So this will converge, converges to f of x, um, where f of x is continuous f is continuous at x. And I should specify a little bit better here. Not if f is continuous at x, but if the periodic extension of f is periodic, or is continuous f, so periodic extension. Periodic extension is the phenomenon that we're seeing here where that horizontal line is then repeated in the fashion of a sine function outside of the interval. But if not, if it's not continuous at a point, or if we're at a place where the periodic extension is going to create a jump, which is what's happening here, and it converges instead to 
what the authors Brown and Churchill call f of x plus plus f of x minus. In other words, this is the limits of f as f approaches x from the left and approaches f from the right if f bar has a jump discontinuity. And so that explains this intermediate value phenomenon that happens with the Fourier series. This is another theorem that we're not going to really use explicitly, um, but it kind of tells us a little bit about what we're getting, what we're buying for our money uh, when we construct a Fourier series.